So there are three different types of transformations that as a seventh grader you're responsible for. When you get into eighth grade, you talk about a fourth one called dilations, which we have actually kind of talked about, but you're not going to be required to actually do it on a shape. A dilation is making it bigger or smaller, whereas these other three transformations we're going to talk about today, the size of the shape does not change. So that's very important for these three transformations. So the first one we're going to talk about is translations. And there is a smaller word that kind of goes along with translations to help you remember what it is. The SL in translations help you remember. Some people might already be thinking it, and in the word is slide. Okay? You're sliding the shape. So you are moving it up, down, left, or right. Okay? Any combination of those. And if it's on a coordinate plane, it'll tell you how many units in whichever direction that you need to slide your shape. And that's the transformation that we're going to focus on doing today, actually. Another transformation is a reflection. So just like translation, there's a word that kind of goes along with it to help you remember. The FL in reflection helps you remember the word, and it is flip. So just like if you uh, look at yourself in the mirror, it's a reflection of you. It's a flipped image of you. So things on the right go to the left. When you reflect a shape, which is what we're going to be doing tomorrow, we're going to be flipping the shape over the x-axis or flipping it over the y-axis. Okay, so again, we'll, we'll focus on doing that tomorrow. And then the third one that um, you need to know is a rotation. And rotation think about turning. So you can turn 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees. If you go to 360, then you're right back to where you started. None of these transformations, the size stays the same of the shape. Shape stays same size. And that part's really important. They always try to um, I've seen like where they try to give seventh graders a really tricky problem and they're like, this shape has been reflected across the y-axis and translated up three units and right two units. What is the new area of the shape? Well, it's the same area. Okay, so even if the shape looks completely different because it's been transformed in these ways, it's still the same area. It's still the same perimeter. Everything about it size-wise is the same. Okay? All right, so now we're going to focus on actually doing our translations. Did you? Okay, so this is an example of a translation. Unfortunately, my graph paper didn't show up, so I made some other examples. Um, but I wanted to still show you this one. You can see, obviously, this is a triangle that is translated. And do you notice how this one is ABC, but that one is ABC and it has like a little apostrophe next to it? Do you see these little things here? Okay, those are called prime. A prime, B prime, C prime. So what that indicates is that's the new shape. So this is the starting shape, and this is the new shape, okay, where, where it went to. So even though we can't really count the boxes on this coordinate plane, we can see that we moved up and right. Do you see that? Up and right. It's translated up and right. Um, on this one, again, it's really important to recognize which one is your starting shape and which one is your new shape. This one is our starting shape over here. So which directions did this translate? Left, down, or down and left. It doesn't really matter which way you go first, okay? So unlike slope or anything like that, it doesn't matter which way you go first. You can go left and down, or you can go down and left. It doesn't matter. All right, so in this one here, I actually want to translate this one. The directions are over there, the rule, up, four, and right, five. So when you do this, so this is going to be similar to what you're going to do on IXL. They're going to give you a shape, and they're going to tell you where they want you to move it. So I'm just going to start with one of my points. I'm going to count up four boxes, and then I'm going to count right five boxes. And I'm going to put a point. And on IXL, you won't have to label it, but up here I am going to label it. So I'm going to label that A prime, because this was the original A. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing for B. Starting at B, I'm going to go up four and right five. 
and I'm going to label that B prime, C, up four, right five, C prime, and then D, up four, right five. And then on IXL, what's nice about it is it'll kind of draw your shape automatically for you. But there it is right there. Okay. So your shape really should mimic the shape that was made. And it's not just about trying to copy the size of the shape. It really is just taking each point individually and counting the directions for each point. Does that make sense? Yes, maybe, kind of. So on this one, we would count for each one. We'd count left eight and up two. Do you want me to do that? Most people look really bored right now. Like you totally get this. Yeah. yeah. It's not, trans, translations are not the hard ones. So what would be the rule in this one? This is a crazy looking shape, by the way. It's not a polygon, but it still follows the translation rules. First of all, what are the two directions? Good. So noticing first that this one is your starting shape and that this one is your new shape, and you knew that by, by the little apostrophes there. So you would need to go right and down or down and right, doesn't matter which one. Does it matter which point I look at to, to count? No. I could pick any one of these four points and go to the corresponding point, and it would be the same amount of boxes, okay? I'm just gonna start with A. So to get from this A to this A, I'm going to go down one, two, three, and I'm going to go right one, two, three, four, five. And that's it. Okay. So finding those rules, is that easy enough? Yes. Um, this one, how would you find the area of a triangle? What's the formula for area of a triangle? Good. One half base times height. Now the base and the height have to make a right angle. So there's our right angle here. So how, how large is this side? Three. How large is this side? Five. So half of three times five. Half of 15. What's half of 15? 7.5 uh, units squared. Now, if I were to translate this down and left, down five and left three, which again, I won't bore you with doing, but what is the area of the new triangle? It would be exactly the same, okay? All right, so I'll go ahead and give you the rest of the time to work then. Here are your two IXL assignments. They are different from each other, like they're both about translations. Some of them, you're, you're translating an actual shape. Other ones, you're translating just a point. Okay, 70% on both of them. Keep in mind that even though you, you get to 70%, you don't get a 70% in power school. You would get 100% in power school for getting up to level 70. Does that make sense? Well, 70% on this IXL would get you 100% on to power school. All right.